What's up everyone? Welcome to part one of a series where we build a convolution neural network and train it using the Fashion MNIST data set. So Fashion MNIST is a data set with 10 classes of clothing and all the images are 28 by 28 grayscale. So you can see it's basically the, the exact same format as the original MNIST data set, but instead of handwritten digits, we're going to be using clothing. So the goal with Fashion MNIST is to create a data set that's a bit more challenging to train a model to. With the original MNIST data set, you could build a relatively simple model and get accuracies as high as 99%. But that's not going to be the case with Fashion MNIST. It's going to be a lot more challenging to get high accuracy. So with this series, we're going to walk through the basic steps on how to build a CNN using Keras, and we'll also do some analysis using TensorBoard. So we'll show you how to build the PSA and TSNE embedding visualizations and do a, a quick walkthrough on TensorBoard and, and how to use it with Keras. So I think it'll be a pretty fun and useful series. So let's get started. Let's begin by talking about the prereqs. So what I've done is created a new notebook and I'll post this to my GitHub and add a link in the description for you to download. But what I've done is created a quick overview of what Fashion MNIST is. And then I've provided a download link to where you can get Fashion MNIST from Kaggle. And the reason why I recommend downloading from Kaggle is because they've done some pre-processing to the data set. So instead of downloading the image files, what they've done is provided a CSV where the first column is the label data, and then the remaining columns are the actual pixel data. So they've taken those 28 by 28 images and flattened them into a single row, which is 784 long. So each row in the CSV is the label and then the pixel data. So it's just a little bit simpler to work with. So you can download it here. And then as far as libraries goes, I'd recommend starting with Anaconda because it comes with all the extra libraries like NumPy, um, sklearn, pandas, uh, matplotlib, all that stuff. So you don't have to, but it just simplifies things. So if you need help installing Anaconda, I've made a tutorial video and there's a link right here where you can follow. And then for deep learning, we're gonna be using TensorFlow, the GPU version, and then Keras on top of that. So TensorFlow can be a little tricky to install, but if you need help, I've made a tutorial video where we install the GPU version and it's pretty current so we're using version 1.4 and then once you've got TensorFlow to install Keras it's just pip install Keras and the reason why we're using Keras is it's a library that sits on top of TensorFlow and it just simplifies everything a lot so creating a model is very few lines of code and very simple using Keras so like I said, it's just gonna make things a lot easier for us. So that's what we're gonna be using. And then just to mention, the models that I'm using are based on previous models that have been posted to Kaggle. So if you follow this link here, it's a, basically a nice page that goes through a lot of the stuff we're gonna be talking about. So it, it provides a bunch of different model types. So a basic neural network, there's a, a one layer neural network, a, um, yeah, one layer CNN, and then it just builds on top of that. So just want to mention that since I'm going to be using some of the code from here. So with that being said, let's jump into the code itself. So we're going to start by just importing the data, splitting it up into our testing and training data, and take a look at some of these images. So we're not going to get into the deep learning portion until the next video. So to begin, let's import numpy as np. Then we're going to import pandas as pd. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then from sklearn.model model selection, we're going to import train test split cool so the first thing we're going to do is import the csv data into a pandas data frame so the way we do that is we're going to create a data frame called train df 
we're going to set that equal to pd.read csv. And what I've done is place this these CSV files into a data folder that's in the same directory as my notebook. So the way the Kaggle data comes, it's basically two files. There's the fashion MNIST test data and then the fashion MNIST train data. So we're going to be importing both of these. So since they're in they're in a folder that's in the directory with the notebook and the folder is called data, we'll just import from data and the file is called fashion-mnist underscore uh, train.csv, csv. And then we'll create our, our test data frame. And that's going to be equal to pd.read csv. And again, it's going to be in data slash, and it's called fashion-mnist underscore test csv and just to take a look at it we'll call train df dot head cool so now you can see that the first column is the label data and because there's 10 classes this is just going to be a number from 0 to 9 and then the remaining columns are the actual pixel data so there's 784 columns of pixel data and like I said before each row is a different image so now let's split our train data up into the X and Y arrays. So typically what X represents is the image data and then Y represents the labels. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is convert these data frames into NumPy arrays because that's what TensorFlow and Keras wants. They don't want data frames. So what we'll do is we'll create arrays called train data and that's going to be equal to our train, or sorry, that's going to be equal to numpy array. And we're just going to pass our train df. And then we're going to specify the D type, and it's going to be float32. So typically, when you're working with TensorFlow, everything's going to be float32s or int32s. Not sure why they don't like 64 bit uh, numbers, but yeah, you're going to be using float32s. So that's going to be our train numpy array. And then we're going to do the same with the test data. So test data is going to be np.array. And we're going to take our test df and set the d type also equal to float32. All right. So now we're going to split this up into the x and y. So the x is the pixel data, the y is the labels. So we're going to be slicing these arrays. So the way we do that is let's create our, our X train and that's just going to be our train. Let me bring this up a little bit. Train data. And the way we slice it is the first thing is going to be just a colon. So that means we're going to take every single row in the train data array and then we're going to slice the column. So we're going to start on the first column and go to the end. And what this means is we're going to exclude that zero column, which is the label. So X train is just the, the pixel data. Now let's create Y train. So Y train is going to be our train data. And we're also going to be taking all the rows, but we're just going to take the zero column. Cool. So we've got our train data sliced. And now let's do the same for our test data. So X test is going to be equal to train, oh, oops, test data. And the slicing is going to be the exact same thing. We're going to take all the rows, start on the first column, and go all the way to the end. And then Y test is going to be the exact same thing. Test data. Take all the rows. Just take the zero column. And finally, what we want to do is instead of our pixel data being 0 to 255, we want it to go from 0 to 1. So the way we can rescale all the pixel data is just divide our, our X train by 255 and divide our X test by 255. So now when we run this, we've got all our data split up, divided up into labels and actual pixel data. Cool. Now what I want to do is we're also going to take our training data 
and we're gonna split it again, and we're gonna split it into validation data and actual training data. And you'll see why we do this later, but it, basically it's to, once we've trained our model, we want to get some stats from it using Keras. So we'll use this validation data to get the stats from it, which we'll see in a later video, but let's split it up now. So the way we split it up is we're gonna be using that train test split. So the way train test split works is it's gonna be returning four different arrays. So the first one is gonna be X train. Next one's gonna be X validate. Then it's gonna be Y train and Y validate. So that's gonna be equal to our train test split. Yeah, split. And what we pass in here is gonna be the X train and the Y train. So that's what it's gonna be splitting up. And then we're gonna pass the um, the test size. So test size is basically how much you wanna split into the validate and train data. So we're gonna set it equal to 0.2. So that means 20% is going to the validation data and the rest is going to the train data. And then finally, we're gonna specify the random state. And random state specifies how we're gonna split the stuff into the, the training and the validation data. So you can either leave it by default to none and then it, um, I think it just cho chooses a random number. But based on the, the examples I saw on Kaggle, we're just gonna pick one, two, three, four, five. I'm not sure how important this is, but we're just gonna keep it the same code. So we can run that, and now we've got our training data split again. So finally what I wanna do is just take a look at a few images, just so you can see what these things look like. So we'll create an image object, and it's just gonna be, we're gonna go from the X train data, and we're just gonna take one row from the train data. So the row, we'll just pick a random number like 50, and then we're gonna take all of the, the columns in that row. So now if I were to call plt.mshow, pass it image, oops, image, and then do plt.show, and what did I do wrong? Oh, oops, so I forgot the key part. We want to reshape this. So like I said before, this is just a column or a row that's 784 long. We want to reshape this into the original image shape, which is 28 by 28. So now we've got an actual 2D array that we can plot. So here you can see we've got a shoe. If we were to pick another number, here we get a t-shirt, another number, we get some pants. So this is what the data looks like. It's just 28 by 28 images of some clothing. So I think we're gonna stop here for this video. In the next video, we're gonna actually build the model and we'll build a few different models to see how they perform. And we'll also add some of the TensorBoard um, support so we can save this to, um, we can log this data to a file or a checkpoint file and then look at it more with TensorBoard. And then finally, we're gonna do the embedding. So we'll do the the PCA and the TSNE embeddings and look at the cool visualizations there. So stay tuned for the next one. Notebook will be available on GitHub. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you've got any questions, you can comment below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.